Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I'm getting ready. Actually, we're going to do a live stream here, our, su our Sunday evening uh, bitch fest where we basically bitch and moan about the Cowboys or actually feel better about them. Lately, we've been feeling better about them. One of the things that we've heard um, about is Zeke Elliott. He's overpaid. He shouldn't have been paid. You can't pay a running back. Zeke Elliott, he's done. His numbers, he's going downhill and stuff like that. And I'm going to say, let's pump the brakes just a little bit here on the end of Zeke Elliott because there's some reasons why you could look at the production being down and why you should actually feel good about where he's going to be this year. Here's what's kind of cool. Here's what's kind of cool, and I want you to think about this. Now, again, I'm the village idiot. You know, I, I do YouTube here as Joe the fan and giving you my point of view. Now, here's my thoughts. You might remember back in 2019, Zeke Elliott held out. He ended up getting his $90 million contract. You remember, you know, he agreed to the $90 million extension with the Cowboys to end his holdout. You'll remember he was in Cabo working out. Working out in the sand in Cabo is not the same as being in football shape. And I believe that that, you know, th this is where the Cowboys, you know, they always want to tell you they're smarter than everybody else and they're not going to reset the market and they're going to, make contracts that are team friendly and stuff. Well, I got to say that the Cowboys screw themselves more times than not. And that was one of the cases where they kept saying, we're not going to reset the market. And, you know, we remember uh, Jerry Jones saying Zeke who in the preseason. Well, let's be clear here. Playing football is not something that, you know, we can be a weekend warrior and just show up and to expect to play at the same level as somebody who's able to work out. And it's my contention in the same breath that I say that D-Law was set back because he didn't get his shoulder worked on until April after he got his contract extension. He wasn't able to do anything with that shoulder and that arm as far as training camp. And you could see the numbers on him went way downhill. And you can also say that Zeke Elliott didn't go into that season being in great shape. Because here's the thing. Football is not like when I grew up. It, it's actually amazing to me because I remember just this past week riding back home and going past JMU and seeing the lights on at the stadium. And I, I was thinking maybe they're doing spring football right now. Because during spring football, with Joe Przicki, that first year he was there, if you made it through the whole spring football without missing a practice, you got a shirt that said, I hit for 20. And when I say hit, we're in full pads hitting like a full practice for spring football. In the NFL, you've got 14 padded practices in training camp and 11 padded practices during the season. You can't get in shape to play football during the season. If you miss training camp, you miss a lot of the conditioning and getting in shape because once the season starts, it's about maintaining what you have as, as long as you can because from that point on, you're going downhill. So if you start the season out of shape, you're not getting in shape during the year. And I can look at that and say, that might be a reason why Zeke Elliott's numbers possibly went down. Okay. Enter the next year. The COVID year. And even then, it wasn't too bad. I, I had a cough Let, let's, and uh, a little bit of shortness of breath. But uh, now I was... Oh, let, let me start it over. I would say I had maybe one or two days where I felt symptoms. And even then, it wasn't too bad. I, I had a cough and uh, a little bit of shortness of breath. But uh, now I would say I feel, feel, feel good. I feel normal. Um, Still can't work out. I got to wait until uh, I could have went and got retested uh, this week. Um, I just decided, I mean, it won't, it won't hurt just to 
to wait another week. Okay. And, uh, uh, let me stop right there for a second. Time, no, okay. Uh, Hold uh, uh, This week. Um, do you hear? Do you hear him trying to struggle to breathe there? L- listen to it. It's coming up. Listen to him. I just decided. I mean, it won't, it won't hurt just to to wait. Another you see right there. And, uh, <gasps> you see it. Did did that look normal to you? To wait another week and uh, just give myself more time to uh, rest up. Rest up. It, won't, it, won't, it won't hurt just to to wait another week and uh, just give myself more to wait time another week. Uh, rest up. But uh, I feel good. Okay. Okay. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. See, so. so here we have then the next year. That was June 24th, you know, a couple of weeks before training camp. So he couldn't work out during that time. And one of the things they say about COVID is, is you can lose, you know, every it affects different people different ways. They say you can lose, you know, 10% of your um, breathing capacity from COVID. We saw what happened to Amari Cooper when he had COVID that he ended up being like, you know, when he came back, the first game back, he was just like way out of it. And you started thinking, okay, it's, it's taken a couple of games for him to get himself right. And he never really seemed like got back on track. His best numbers were the first half of the season. So me looking at this and saying, okay, Zeke had COVID that we know he had COVID and he couldn't work out for a couple of weeks. It may be that that was part of the issue of 2020, right? Can we at least say that that's possible? That he may have actually had some longer-term things that slowed him down? Because as a NFL running back, you must be in great shape. You, you, there is no if, ands, or buts. And this is different from, say, um, Todd Gurley, who had arthritis in the knees. We're not dealing with arthritis in the knees. Okay, now... Let's go through here one more thing. I want to look at the numbers here because this is the game-by-game statistics. Because when we go through the start, this is reverse, okay? So the first game of the season, Tampa Bay is on the bottom. When you look at – now, we we only ran the ball 11 times, so you got three yards per carry there. So that wasn't good, but that was just the beginning of the season. And Zeke always starts off the season kind of slow. But take a look at the yards per carry average after that game. Against the uh, Chargers, 4.4. Against Washington, 5.6. Against Carolina, 7.2. Against the Giants, 5.2. New England, 4.1. Does that look like a guy who can't run? Uh, You look at those first few games, you know, because they're they're saying, well, he averaged 4.2 yards per carry this season. Yeah, that's true. He did. That is very true. But somewhere along that line was when he got the PCL injury. Because after New England, it was, you know, 16 carries, 3.1, 5.1, 2.9, 3.6, 2.8, 3.5, 3.8, 3.1. Clearly, there's a major difference here between how he started. You see Zeke Elliott the way he started the season, and we were able, look look at that. And also to add to that, Tyron Smith and the offensive line shifting. Um, I should have actually averaged out the numbers, his, his yards per carry from Denver back versus the second half of the season. If you're telling me he was able to run the football that effectively the first half of the season, and then he messed up his PCL and the offensive line went down, this isn't about Zeke Elliott just being a burned-out running back. This was about an, in, an injured Zeke Elliott and an offensive line that wasn't really there because you can look at Tony Pollard's numbers, they went down as well. So with this PCL healed, and he was running 22 miles an hour. And when you think about what we saw with Zeke Elliott, the burst hasn't been there. It's the burst. It's not getting through the first level. It's after making those huge, you know, take it to the house. And that's where you look at it and say, well, conditioning in 2019 could have been a factor because he wasn't there with the team working out. You could say conditioning could have been an issue in 2020 
because of COVID. And you could look at this and say, conditioning was there the first half of the season, but all of a sudden it went to crap because he was injured. So for me, this says you're going to see Zeke Elliott rebound big time. It will be return of the Mac. You watch. So that's what my hypothesis is on it and why Zeke Elliott will end up being really, really good this year. We'll see what happens. We'll find out if I'm right, but you watch. This will be the bounce back year for Zeke Elliott. We're going to say, damn, I'm glad we kept that guy. All right, with that being said, I will see you guys in a few minutes for our live stream. Just remember. 23-hour lockdown. I'm the man up in this piece. King Kong ain't got shit on me.